name is Jay Raccoon. I'm here to talk to you guys about the history of high school and youth sports. The history, uh, pre-constitutional period, uh, the Native Americans were the first to bring youth sports into our country. Uh, they played the cross. Uh, it was called this because there was a uh, of a bishop's cross-shaped procedure. I think that's how you say that. Uh, the European settlers came through and they brought over sports such as tennis, cricket, and several versions of baseball. And after them, the uh, African American slaves did things like throw the javelin, box, and wrestle. In the 19th century, schools started to form together their sporting things. Uh, private schools were the first to provide athletic participation opportunities amongst the students. You have Round Hill School in Massachusetts, which was the first known school to promote physical well-being of students. They used to promote muscular Christianity by creating gentlemen who could take on a modern life. In 1859, Gunnery School in Washington was the first school to feature outside competition in baseball. In 1878, St. Paul's School in New Hampshire First school to hire a full-time faculty member for coaching. In 1895, Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire was the first school to have an athletic director. And from there, the public schools started to build on from the privates. And with the public schools, physical activity was a way to develop ties with classmates and the alumni. Baseball tournaments started being held in Boston and Cook County. And Illinois and Wisconsin formed the uh, first interscholastic competitions. The progressive movement uh, was to use the athletics as a tool to prepare for modern life and to assimilate immigrants into American culture. This started to become big, more popular throughout the 20th century, which uh, also promoted formalization for public school athletics. Emerging schools coordinated competitions in baseball, track, rifle sh shooting, and emphasized sportsmanship. After World War I, school sports for males were promoted as a source for physical training. Sports were seen to develop the social skills, such as cooperation and discipline, and also boosted student retention and graduation rates. Uh, some of the organizations that started to come out with the developing sports for the youth were the uh, YMCA, New England's Christian Association. Uh, it established itself to attract urban youth to Christianity throughout athletes, athletics. Women's Christian Association, the YWCA, was established concurrently with the YMCA, and the first gym opened up in Boston in 1884. The Works Progress Administration, Many youth sports organizations were initiated during this period, which you have things like the American Legion for baseball, Pop Warner football, Catholic youth organizations, and amateur softball and Little League baseball. The governance of these things came from like the National Federation of State High School Association, nonprofit organizations that governs extracurricular activities for high schools. They have a legislative bodies made up of one representative from each state. And they're spelled the responsibilities are held by 12 members of the board. And the board of directors approves things like an annual budgets. There are a lot of like state associations with these things, such as like the OHSA and everything like that, your state boards. And uh, they have the direct roles in organizing state championships and determining athletes' eligibilities. And with that, you also have a National Youth League organization which just promotes the participation in sports among children, such as in things like Little League Baseball. Your career opportunities with youth and high school sports include things like the athletic director, which takes care of everything involving the high school sports for your school district. The youth league directors, uh, most of them are volunteers. They have less involvement with athletes and perform less duties publicly. You have your coaches, which is self-explanatory, as well as your trainers. You have your officials and judges who are considered independent contractors because the schools have no control over them and they just withhold like in-game responsibilities. 
Now, managing your, <coughs> your programs, and your program goals. Uh, one of them is what it all costs. Uh, but you also want to try to like stay away from overtraining because it can lead to injuries. You really want to focus on winning properly with the youth kids. Uh, performance and evaluation of supervision. Uh, coaches are supposed to take care of everything necessary for the athletes to participate in a lawful manner. And with that, you can evaluate your coaches on how they do that. But most schools don't evaluate the coaches very well. Uh, as you can tell, there's a lot of problems with athletes and coaches everywhere, even today. Um, you also have your financial concerns. Uh, with the rise of the economic recessions, many schools face budget cuts, causing a loss of athletic opportunity. And state associations have tried to adjust sponsor activities to control costs. Uh, with this, you see a lot of things with schools have to go to like pay to play for their athletes and they're also losing their athletic programs. Uh, I know there's been several lose things such as wrestling and things like that due to the fact that they can't afford it. Um, the marketing aspect, uh, cooperation uh, property from schools and sports. Uh, ESPN and Disney have come together for ESPN World Sports Complex, the AU National Championships. And in 2008, Disney made approximately $2.7 billion from these. Uh, I've been there myself. I've wrestled at the Disney Duels, which was pretty sweet. And it was very expensive to go there. I think we ended up paying like $1,200 for the round trip, including motels and travel costs and all that. Um, and there's expanding participation opportunities. Um, things like the Illinois High School at association, uh, they're looking at things like competitive bass fishing as a competitive sport just to kind of expand what kids can do throughout their tenure of their high school careers. <sighs> ethics. Uh, one of the big things involving ethics in sports is using uh, use of performance enhancing substances, health risk, and unfair advantage gain for those who use or those who don't. You know, efforts are being made to drug test. I know my school picked up drug testing for things like this. And uh, things like this really just comes out. And teenagers feel like impervious to risk and enjoy challenging authority to use such substances, thinking that they can get away with whatever they're doing, trying to get to the top, but ways aren't very well. And uh, also, you know, uh, for example, St. Landry Parish. Uh, six public schools can test their athletes up to three times a year for recreational drugs, just things like marijuana, all those other things. And then also with that, you have gender equity, which comes in effect with like Title IX, uh, which just calls for equality amongst male and female athletic opportunities. Uh, this has caused real financial disparity between the suburban and city girls' athletic programs because not all public schools are able to afford such things for girls to be able to participate in the same number of sporting events as males when this hit. Um, and it's caused a little havoc with other programs all across the country. Um, the legal side, uh, enforcing participation rules and codes of conduct. Um, in April 2010, the Yarmouth School District sought to discipline a female's lacrosse player for violating code of conduct. Uh, this was kind of seen with uh, her just holding a course like can. She got suspended for three weeks and was not permitted to go on, on an out of region team trip. And she was required to have six substance abuse sessions before her reinstatement to play. Uh, there are a lot of legal things that go on with sports everywhere. And uh, as you can tell, the school district took out a very big discipline action upon her, but you have to do that if you want to keep uh, any sort of like any sort of what's the word I'm looking for uh, hierarchy in your programs between who uh, who controls them and who doesn't, and that is all. Thank you.